Hey smokers, Draga1 here. This video is going to be about Brendan Chung and his indie game company, Blendo Games. In 2019 and early 2020, I was a passive viewer of Brendan's game dev streams and became more and more interested in watching them over time. So much so that I got disappointed when he took a day off from streaming. Fossa was the one who introduced me to him and we frequently discussed his games. Eventually I got interested enough to interview him and I did so via email. I was ready to make a massive documentary style video where I went in depth with each of his games and to take a deep dive into what I thought was a huge in-depth narrative and lore that existed across every game spanning two decades. For weeks I was writing test scripts and gathering my notes for how to actually put a script together. At that time I had just played every single game that Brendan made, everything was fresh in my mind and I was just about to dump everything in this amazing universe out of my head into a YouTube video. But as you could probably guess by now, the project had to be put on hold. As I mentioned in a few other videos, my day job got extremely busy for months, and I lacked the energy to complete a huge project larger than the scale of even the Frogger video, which by itself took months to complete. So the Brendan Chung video got put on hold, and I prioritized making some simpler videos when I could, and I hoped at some point things would slow down enough to allow me to finish the video. Well, now that's happened. Things have slowed down a bit. But the interview I did with Brendan is now getting close to a year old. None of his games are fresh in my mind. Brendan himself hasn't streamed in months. And the funny moments I experienced on stream, I no longer remember exactly when they took place, and I have no idea where to find them. So instead of going into a super complicated hour-long editorial essay documentary thing, I'll mainly be going over the interview questions for this video, and try to tie in as many notes as possible that will still make sense. So, uh, here we go. Blendo Games is an indie game company consisting of just one person. The man, the myth, the legend, Brendan Chung. Well, not entirely. He gets help here and there on multiple different game projects. He founded the company in 2010, 10 years ago. Since I did the interview with Brendan, he teamed up with four other devs, at least so far as far as I know of, to help with coding, level design, and music to work on his next game, which is mid-development, called Skin Deep. His ninth game, which is based on the Doom 3 engine. He also uses a Model M from Unicomp, and somewhat coincidentally, I just got one, and this script is the first thing I seriously typed with it. Brendan Chung has almost 30 years of game dev experience. Most of it from his time at Pandemic Studios in LA. While there, he worked on titles such as Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, the old ones that is, Mercenaries 1 and 2, Destroy All Humans, the old one that is, and The Saboteur. He was a level designer for Full Spectrum Warrior 1 and 2, did a bunch of cinematics and tutorial levels. Lord of the Rings Conquest did multiplayer systems, camera design, tutorial levels, and so on. Going back to his early life history, his first computer was an IBM XT, which he played old junky CGA games on, and first started coding in QBasic. He knew he wanted to make games for a living since he was in 6th grade, and by the last two years of high school he made the Citizen Able game mods for Quake 2. When he got to college he majored in visual arts with an emphasis in film. Since its inception, 10 years ago, Blendo Games has developed 8 fully released titles to Steam and other platforms. If you look at the games individually, or perhaps even casually play them for short stretches of time like I did, you might notice a connection between them. My story starts in 2013 when Humble Bundle released the Blendo Games Bundle. I had seen promotions, ads, and Steam recommendations for 30 Flights of Loving pop up all over the place and was eager to try it out. So I got the pack of games, which included Air Forte, Flotilla, Adam Zombie Smasher, and, of course, 30 Flights of Loving. At the time, I was only really interested in playing 30 Flights of Loving, so I played it. Although I only remember a few snippets, I have more memories of a friend of mine playing it, actually. It occupies a strange spot in my memory I can't really place. After playing it, 30 Flights of Loving sat in my Steam library untouched for six years, with a total time played of eight minutes. I know that sounds like I barely tried it, but that was a full playthrough. 30 Flights of Loving is a very short game. When I played it initially, I can't really remember what my opinion was. It was an experience that occupied such a small fragment of my life, and at the time, I hadn't taken in the deeper style of storytelling that was taking place. Back then it was one and done, and I moved on. 
It wasn't until late last year that Fossa, the guy who you met a few videos ago when we celebrated the Dreamcast anniversary, introduced me to the Bundo Games Twitch channel, which I didn't immediately relate to 30 Flights of Loving, and it surprisingly kept my attention. It was fascinating watching Brendan develop a game in real time, making noticeable progress in game mechanics within minutes. I could really see his current project, Skin Deep, taking shape, and quickly. For several weeks, I'd always watch his game dev streams while working. And soon enough, I fired up a copy of 30 Flights of Loving and gave it another playthrough. It was at this point where I got sucked in and somewhat obsessed by every game he made. And I started to get lost in the world he created. Every game seemed connected to one another and seemed to contain a hidden lore and story that was just out of sight. A story told only in brief fragments, usually without words at all. Its subtle, brief, but powerful emotional moments rocked me to my core. For lack of a better phrase. Provoking an emotional response unmatched by any game I had played up to that point. Brandon was doing something unique, and he was doing it with very little. Using now outdated but very functional and accessible game engines, after spending years with multiple versions of VidTech and a lot of time in the industry, he has near mastery of the tools, despite their age. Previous versions of this script went into tremendous detail about how the stories seem to connect all the games together into one world, one set of characters, all in a single timeline. The timeline itself seemed to be an alternate timeline to ours, where space travel had been discovered much earlier, to the point where there was a moon base in the 1940s and where hovertech existed in the 1980s. Computer tech, on the other hand, kept with our current pace of development. His latest game up to this point, Quadrilateral Cowboy, is his most involved and most story-rich game. It's a very unique title which blends coding and heisting. The method of storytelling is so simple yet so powerful. He does, again, so much with so little. It doesn't matter that everyone is a blockhead and can't actually talk outside of sounding like Peanuts' parents. This was the first game in recent memory that a video game actually made me feel something. A real emotion. Um, and not just those fake emotions you get from Call of Duty when they kill a character that they always do every single game. At this point I'm just not surprised anymore. When I interviewed Brendan, I was high off of this feeling. A feeling of wonderment, a need to uncover a mystery, and most of all an emotional attachment to what I had just experienced. I think I could have done a little better with my choice of questions. Really it was me and Fossa getting curious about what was going on behind the scenes since we were both enjoying watching his streams. So since I promised myself I would get this out by Christmas or maybe New Year's, I don't actually know when I'm going to be able to friggin' upload this. We'll have to cut to the chase right here and go to the interview questions. Some of the information in them is going to be a little... It's going to retread some of the stuff we just summarized, because uh, that's kind of where I got some of my information and research was directly from Brendan Chung himself. So question one. What were your absolute favorite games growing up? or when you were younger, and what are your favorite games of all time? And when he was younger, Quest for Glory, Dune 2, TIE Fighter, and Sim City. Of all time, Thief, Far Cry 2, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Company of Heroes, Another World, Myth, and Team Fortress 2. I remember that he talked about Far Cry 2 several times on his stream, I think and that it was it was actually a big inspiration uh, for a lot of different game mechanics and stuff, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, not A game I'm not really a fan of, actually, but... Question 2. What drew you into Quake 2 modding with the Citizen Able series? You used this engine off and on for 10 plus years, which culminated in the release of Gravity Bone and 30 Flights of Loving, which still used the modified Quake 2 engine. And he responds... I enjoy playing FPS games a lot, and the idea of making my own levels was hugely appealing. I gravitated towards Quake 2 for various reasons. It ran well on my very average computer. It was a mod-friendly platform for single-player work, and I had a lot of momentum on it from my previous deathmatch level work and prior work on Wolfenstein 3D and Doom 1 and 2, such as the Barista series um, that you can actually still download on his website. You mentioned on a stream once that id tech, specifically id tech 4, uses many human readable file names slash descriptions and was one of the main reasons you have been drawn into using this engine over the years. What other features of id tech have you hooked? 
this one was a super specific question and uh, I don't really know why, why I asked it but uh, it, I just got so curious because he, I, I thought it was really awesome that he was still using uh, the Doom 3 engine and of course it performs incredibly well and it, the engine feels very responsive especially in quadrilateral cowboy he replies the GUI system was and in my opinion still is just an incredibly cool feature he's referring to the interactable monitors and screens like you see in Doom 3 when you're entering in passcodes and reading email and stuff like that. The engine itself is very cleanly written and easy to read. Number four, this was probably something I did out of a little bit of ignorance when I asked it, um, just because I had seen a lot of uh, trashy um, games on the Steam store of people just doing asset flips, and in my mind I associated that with the Unity engine, so I asked him this. You've steered clear of using Unity for every game project. Even though it seems every corner we turn, another indie developer is using it. Do you share the perception that the Unity engine is associated with half-baked early access nightmares, despite some wonderful success stories, and have you avoided it as a result? Or does it not have the workflow you're accustomed to, not willing to face the downtime associated with relearning everything? And he replies, I do not share the perception that Unity produces half-baked or bad games, no. Personally, I feel engine tech has practically nothing to do with that. The tech we use is whatever we make of it. I'm just very familiar with id tech engines, and I'm leveraging that. This next question actually kind of derailed part of the goal of the video, which was the overarching storyline that I thought that he had some underlying tale behind all of it. And the way he responded to this question made me think that uh, he's really just kind of building the world as he goes, which is a different way of doing it. In my mind, I thought it was all he had. He had masterminded it all from beginning to end. There wasn't any mysteries in his mind. But uh, this is the question I asked. One of the main topics for my video will be focusing on the overarching narrative that seems to connect all of your games, the core storyline forming throughout the course of Adam Zombie Smasher in the 1960s, Gravity Bone plus 30 Flights of Loving in the 1970s, Quadrilateral Cowboy in the 1980s, and presumably Skin Deep. I think your choice to keep a subtle narrative is an excellent idea. That being said, would you want to set the record straight on anything regarding that Nuevos Aires. continuity? I.e., some games only have character references, Air Forte and Flotilla. Others seem unrelated to the story, but have references nonetheless, the Barista series. Not really, no. I enjoy learning about Nuevos Aires. And I hope others do too. Next question. You majored in visual arts with an emphasis in film. Is this film background what inspired some of the unique short film type storytelling scene in your games? I was referring to uh, specifically 30 Flights of Loving uh, and its uh, non-linear storytelling. He replies, yeah, it played a part. I made a lot of video projects in university and I learned my best by just making a lot of things. Next question. What shifted you towards film in college and away again as you shifted into game development? And he replies, I entered university with the goal of making video games. However, there wasn't a video game department, so I studied film. Next question. What was your big break, as in, what game really got you noticed in indie gaming? And did that affect your following projects? I pretty much knew the answer to this one already, but I just wanted to make sure. You never know what uh, his perspective is going to be. So uh, I just, I guess, wanted to double check a little bit how, and, and, and so I could see his point of view of how the release of Gravity Bone really affected him. And he replies, There were some folks in the Quake 2 community who enjoyed the Citizen Able games, but Gravity Bone was the first thing I made that actually got anything remotely resembling major attention. Next question. When you released Gravity Bone, you took on a certain art style that persisted for two other releases. Those releases also have titles that only vaguely relate to their subject matter of the games. Gravity Bone, 30 Flights of Loving, Quadrilateral Cowboy. Is there a deeper meaning to these titles that you would be willing to share? And he replies, I have my own reading on the titles, and I like to keep them open enough for players to imprint their own meaning onto them. Next question. Skin Deep appears to exist in the same universe as prior games. Will it be continuing the quote-unquote story from the previous games? Or fleshing out more of the universe, since it will be set in space? And he replies, both, I guess. Next question. Are you currently working on game development full-time, or do you do game dev contract type work, etc.? This was asked before the pandemic, but... And I don't mean his last job. 
I have occasional contract work I do for or with friends, but my own projects are definitely my full-time job. And I'm assuming he continued that uh, throughout the past year. Next question. How much time do you put into game development outside of streams? This was back when he streamed. He hasn't streamed for many months now. Do you put in a whole work week, or is it just when the mood strikes? And he puts in a whole work week. Next question. How do you handle the balance of tone in your games? There are some parts of your games that are very humorous, while other parts can be quite serious, but seem to coexist quite well. I feel like a, like a third grader wrote that question, <laughs> but whatever. He replies, it's a lot of iteration and playtesting and trying out a lot of things. It's a messy, organic process. Next question. When you play other games, do you find yourself noticing things you want to incorporate in your own games? Do you find yourself nitpicking design choices, or are you just able to enjoy the game as it is and have fun? He replies, it's a mixture of player brain and designer brain. I often try to deconstruct how other games do things and try to walk through the design process. But I'm also still enjoying playing games for fun. Next question. Do you read or watch any game design type media from other devs? He replies, I follow a bunch of dev friends on Twitter and enjoy reading and watching Tom Francis's blog. Next question. What backup software do you use to keep your game dev project safe? I asked him this question because I had been watching him for a while and uh, it seemed like most of his files he was just storing on his local machine and he was still running Windows 7 and I'm like, wait a minute, Brendan, are you using like an older machine? Like, I don't want your hard drive dying and you losing skin deep. But he, he definitely takes care of that. He replies, I use sub I use <laughs> I use subversion source control. And this last question was because Foss is a film nerd. I'm not so big into movies, but he went ahead and asked this even though it wasn't related to some other things, but we were really just curious at this point. Last question. What is your favorite film? He replies, I don't know if I have any one specific film, but in the past five years I've quite enjoyed Mad Max, Fury Road, Little Women, and Uncut Gems. Well, that's the end of my script. Um, this is has to be probably one of my most put off videos of all time. Um, the reason I'm kind of squeezing it out without much work being put into it, even though technically a lot of work went into it over time, uh, I, I really needed to get this video out because it really risked being very out of date. I'm sure at this point there's going to be a lot of uh, inaccuracies, some of which may need to be fixed before uploading. Probably going to miss the Christmas release date. I'm um, going to probably shoot for New Year's, whatever works. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel this video would never have been released if I let it go into next year. I would have had to do a follow-up interview uh, to to see, to get the, the skinny on uh, everything that's going on with him. I mean, since since I did that interview, he's like, big changes have happened. He's gotten married. Like, very recently, I heard he got married, so uh, congratulations, Brendan. Uh, so, I don't have too much else to say here. Um, thanks for sticking with the channel. Uh, I know things have been much slower this year. We haven't had a lot of videos. i uh, been uh, trying to do it when I can. It's It's been hard to get back into the groove of doing videos uh, when uh, you, you start to not do them as much. So, uh, I don't have really too much else to say. Um, the only other thing was is that I was surprised how many references to Christmas there were when I was recording the b-roll footage which was kind of weird um, also uh, this came out right around the time cyberpunk came out and not only did me playing cyberpunk delay this video getting made but uh, quadrilateral cowboy is also a cyberpunk game I wanted to make a joke about that but I didn't really know what it was going to be <laughs> but but uh, uh, eat your heart out, Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> if I had, I think if I had to choose between one game I got to keep and one game I would never be able to play again, between Quadrilateral Cowboy and Cyberpunk 2077, I'd probably stick with Quadrilateral Cowboy. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.